Sonic the Hedgehog on the silver screen is something we never really knew we wanted. Listen, I'm not about to go on the millionth rant about that original character design. It was simultaneously the worst thing ever, and completely unsurprising all at the same time. But hey, say what you will about the movie itself, thanks to the redesign, it at least comes off as a competent, cartoony movie. It'll also end up being the first thing that comes to mind when people hear the phrase Sonic Movie. But actually, there was already a piece of media that had that title covered. The Sonic OVA. Man, I used to watch this movie all the time when I was a kid, back when I was enthralled by anything and everything Sonic the Hedgehog. I guess not much has really changed nowadays. Uh, I, I, I just yell about the blue blur a lot more than I probably should. So an OVA, or Original Video Animation, is actually more common for video game franchises than I initially anticipated. Video game movies always have this negative stigma attached to them, but for animation specifically, if anything, they just happen. People are none the wiser, and everybody moves on. Fire Emblem, Ace Attorney, Bomberman, Parappa the Rapper, Ape Escape, Persona, even Mario got a few. The thing is though, for the most part, these animated adaptations rarely ever leave Japan, which is what makes the Sonic one even more interesting. Yeah, at the time, we did already have three radically different Sonic cartoons, but this is a completely original story that is just kind of influenced by Sonic CD. And also Knuckles has a cowboy hat, sign me the heck up. But to tackle such a topic, I need a partner, a Tales to my Sonic, as it were. You ready to go, Johnny? Did I really need to buy a cowboy hat for this again? Absolutely. Let's begin. Our story begins with our good old buddy duo having some rest and relaxation over by the beach, and Tails, having just finished creating his own jet-powered bodyboard, wants to take it for a ride. Sonic! I finally finished it! See, isn't it great? Oh man, Tails, you're sounding pretty congested there. Can I get you a tissue? Jokes aside, as different as these are to the voices we're used to, I actually don't really mind how they sound for Sonic and Tails. Sonic has that cocky attitude we're all familiar with, and Tails sounds like a child. It works. Suddenly this uh, old owl guy shows up in a burning plane and is spiraling out of control. And before he and even Tails crash into the side of a mountain, Sonic does his Sonic thing and saves them from a burning death. Pretty intense way to start things off, I think. And are we just gonna ignore all this wreckage and how Tails likely looked at this and said, Yay, secret hideout! What's the story behind all this, you know? But hey, that few seconds of Sonic running it really reminds me of the awesome opening to Sonic CD. If that short inspiration is what inspired this full animated feature, then I'm all for it. The more things change, the more they stay the same. It turns out the old owl is actually an aide to the, the president? Really? Oh, this is gonna go swimmingly, isn't it? Aw, oh, hell yeah, dude, we got a classic anime spot with mechanics just operating like normal. I'm a big fan. Soon enough, Sonic and Tails make it to the president's house. Ah, uh, hey, Robotnik is president. Good for him. And his robot guards double as Pokemon, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> It's like the same exact sound, how do they get away with that? So it's here we learn about the overall plot. Dr. Robotnik's old home, Robotropolis, in the Land of Darkness, has been taken over by Metal Robotnik, destroying all of Human Robotnik's creations, and sabotaging the city's electric generator. And the kicker? They only have until sunrise before the generator destroys the entire planet. So he has taken the actual president and his daughter, Sarah, hostage as a way to get Sonic to run through the wasteland and save the day so he doesn't have to. Okay, wait, so Robotnik is trying to be the good guy in the story, but the actual villain is uh, just a metallic version of him? The hell? Okay, just, just give it like 20 seconds. Robotnik's the one controlling Metal Robotnik, isn't he? Bingo. Of course. But regardless, Sonic and Tails make their way over to the Land of Darkness. And ooh, we get more of that awesome Sonic CD styled animation here. This is pretty awesome. Something about the dark and dreary aesthetics combined with the fast paced action? It's probably all nostalgia, but this is definitely one of my favorite iterations of classic Sonic. 
Classic Sonic in a post-apocalyptic world can be an interesting premise if it's written well, and if you ask me so far in the games it hasn't, Sonic Forces is a testament to that. I would recommend the IDW comics though, you should check those, oh there he is, Metal Robotnik with a Gatling gun, holy crap, he's actually packing some heat here, and he has wings too, damn. Naturally our heroes outsmart Robotnik, but not for long for he has another trick up his sleeve, or rather... He is shooting putty right out of his ass. This is such a roller coaster of emotions. One frame he's shooting sticky goo out of his butt, and then the next, Sonic is legitimately about to drown, and Metal Robotnik looks terrifying. This honestly freaked me out a little bit when I was a kid, so I guess they got the job done. Thanks so much, I hate it. But no worries, luckily Knuckles is here, and he has a cowboy hat, so he's like twice as powerful. It's never explained why he has a cowboy hat, nor will he ever wear one again. But in this one instance, I'm a major fan. With a sick three-way attack, the group takes out Metal Robotnik. Also, Knuckles can... fly? Okay. Oh, and Sarah was in the robot the entire time. I guess she's supposed to be like the comic relief to counter Robotnik's evil ways, but... No, 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 it's not fair! You always beat me every time! Yeah, I could do without her. You know, the more we look over the destroyed city, I'm getting major Sonic Adventure vibes. Really makes you think. This was released in 1996 in Japan originally, and with Sonic Adventure two years later down the road, maybe the developers uh, took some notes. I like thinking about stuff like that. But off in the distance, we finally see Robotropolis and the trio makes their way over. Yeah, and in no way is Robotnik overcompensating for something by making his light bright mustache ten times the size of his head. Not at all. Even the generator has Robotnik's face on it. Dude needs to relax. After admittedly a pretty entertaining final stretch to get the machine turned off, yes, to the surprise of nobody, it was a trap all along. Of course it was. Sonic deserved this, to be honest, it was obvious. Naturally, this was all part of Robotnik's plan. Steal information from the real Sonic to power up his creation, Metal Sonic. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. Hyper Metal Sonic. I call it the Hyper Metal Sonic. Because that's a thing for some reason. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest uses of Metal Sonic yet. Don't get me wrong, his... This, in Heroes, was... a thing. But simply being a tool that is a perfect antithesis to Sonic just makes more sense to me. And the rest of this OVA is all about those two decking it out. And oh boy, sprinkled throughout this last 20 minutes, we get some high quality anime shots here. It's pretty cool. Eventually though, we take a detour back to Sonic's home, so Tails can work on technology to help out in the fight. Meanwhile, that old man from earlier? Don't worry about it! Yo damn, he looking good. Listen, man, with this pink hat and your cowboy hat, we are unstoppable. I agree. I am never wearing this stupid thing again. Honestly, there's not a whole lot more story that happens from here on out. Out of nowhere, Robotnik starts talking about marrying Sarah and oh, oh, that's a Robotnik baby with a mustache. Breastfeeding too, oh, oh no. So, actually, the real plan all along was to release a massive flow of magma deep under the North Pole, melting all the ice and exploding the entire planet, Jesus Christ. And this leads us to that beautiful and iconic moment that people remember way more than the movie itself. You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you since I know everything you're going to do. Strange, isn't it? Yeah! That's good stuff. The music during this fight is actually really solid too, in fact the tunes throughout the entire movie are pretty memorable. That South Island theme is just so damn catchy, I highly recommend a listen if you haven't already done so. And hey Tails, what's the best classic Sonic game? Sonic 2! Well, you're wrong, it's Sonic 3, but it's close enough. A few more hits here, a few more kicks there. Unfortunately, one of the attacks breaks through the ice, unleashing some of that dangerous magma. But all is good, this is where everybody starts to shine. You see, the president's plane crashes into the ice bridge, and if the beginning of the movie really is any indication, the aide really shouldn't be wearing those swirly glasses while driving. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying, doesn't seem safe. And then, Metal Sonic saves the two of them? What? So, like, Tails devised a contraption to take control of Metal Sonic, but Robotnik destroyed it. Meaning Metal is essentially fighting on his own free will, I guess, which is what Sonic's free will is since it has his data in it. I think I'm trying to piece together what they're doing here. It leads to a couple cool moments, but becoming good right at the very end, and even sacrificing itself into the lava Terminator style, before, I guess, telepathically saying, it's kinda odd. 
It's a pretty confusing turn of events, honestly. Metal Sonic turning good right at the very end, and that entire Robotnik marriage subplot thing, it comes out of left field, and it kind of makes the second half feel, dare I say, a bit rushed. Did you get it? Because Sonic moves fast, Sonic Rush for Nintendo DS? I'll be here all night. I agree. It's still enjoyable, but almost feels like a third part would have made it even better. I think so too, actually. I'm glad we're on the same page. You didn't move your mouth just now. Oh, and now everything is blue. Cool. Yes, the cowboy hat gave me that power. Oh, nice. Robotnik threatens to continue creating Metal Sonics in an attempt to take over the world, but one of his creations blows up the data disk to put a damper on that idea. Not like it really matters, Metal Sonic keeps showing up anyway throughout the years, and we have some good old buddy-buddy shenanigans as our heroes ride off into the theoretical sunset. I don't know what this president is on, but hey, you do what you gotta do to get through a Sonic plot in one piece. And that wraps up the Sonic OVA. As the credits play and we hear yet another iconic track, Look Alike, with such amazing lyrics as Ice and Water, Steak and Cow, Autumn This Year and Last Year. Believe me, as ridiculous as it sounds, it's all based on the idea of Sonic and Metal Sonic being similar and different at the same time. I guess the movie just expects you to piece everything together right at the very end, but I don't know, it does seem pretty random if you don't look into it a little bit. Overall though, not bad. Oh, it's cheesy, 100%. This is far from a cinematic masterpiece. But it's still an enjoyable ride from start to finish, so it's not just an interesting timepiece of Sonic's past, but it's enjoyable animation in its own right. Each cartoon adaptation in this franchise has its own interpretation of the Sonic characters and universes. From the world-saving serious plot of Sonic Sat AM, good old Sonic Adventure era corniness of Sonic X, and whatever they were attempting to do with Adventures of Sonic. But I feel like the Sonic OVA manages to expand upon the type of Sonic that goes to save Little Planet in Sonic CD. And that's kind of cool. I mean, look at Tidal Tempest Zone. I can't be the only one that sees similarities. I'm just glad we finally had the time to do this sort of thing. We've what? We talked about doing this for like uh, two years now, and for one reason or another, our schedules just couldn't coexist for a while there. Yeah, no lie, we legit have text messages going back to like 2018 talking about planning this entire thing out. So I'm finally glad we can get this over with and I am more than happy to have you on board. Man, it's finally over, that's, that's a good feeling. Absolutely, so can I please burn the hat now? Yeah, go for it, mine's already in the trash. This dude seriously made me buy a cowboy hat for a Sonic video. Hey, some call me Johnny, it's a cowboy hat, Sonic OVA, movie time, yay. Think of all the views, like, comment, subscribe. Ha 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 ha.